Hello, I hope we're live now. If anybody can see me, why don't you uh, just drop a, um, a comment down below. It is Monday night, so it is the uh, Monday night live sessions. And uh, tonight's uh, subject was voted on earlier on this week and we had a couple of different topics that we're going to go through, but this one uh, we decided to be uh, about gain stages. So if, you, if anybody is watching this right now, then please drop a, um, uh, a comment down the bottom. Um, I'm not sure whether anything's coming through. I sure hope this is, <laughs> this is going through. Um, perhaps because before I was doing it on a different one. Actually, let me, let me uh, publish this through a different uh, channel. Okay, I've got somebody here. Okay, so if you can hear me, just drop, drop something in the comments. And, uh, ah, okay, here we go. Pete, how are you, mate, from Columbus? Okay, we're good. This is brand new for me. This is only the second time I've done this, so I just want to make sure I'm doing this or else it looks pretty foolish just you know, talking to a computer. But anyway, great to hear from you, Pete. So today's uh, subject is going to be all about gain stages. It was really a, a great way to have a poll about this because I thought of some other subjects that might be good, but it seems like gain stages was the absolute uh, winner. Um, lots has been happening uh, this week. This week we have um, hit 400 members in the group, which is really exciting. And the way I think about it is that, you know, you might think that number is big or might think that number is small, but can you imagine walking into a room of 400 like-minded musicians and, um, you know, be able to share all the stuff. It's been really a lot of fun uh, this week going, going through that. So anyway, this has been launched through our brand page, Pro Audio DVD's uh, brand page. Um, we'll have to see whether it's better if I'm doing it through um, uh, the group or, um, or through my personal account, but I think this is the, the one from here. But we've talked a bit, Pete. Hey, Pete, what did you post? uh this week um were you posting in about some of the questions that you wanted to put in uh in the, in talking about gain stages looks like we got someone else coming on that's good anyway feel feel free to 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 um uh to talk below okay so uh a couple of things have been going on this week um if you haven't been in our group, so there's, there's going to be a number of people who can pick up this, this uh, live feed, people, my personal friends from Facebook, and also people from the brand page and also people in the group. But if you're not familiar with the group, the Pro Audio EXP group has really, really grown. In about a week and a half, we've hit 400 members. And what's been really neat is that, you know, we've obviously been sharing a lot of stuff uh, technically, and not only have people have been asking me about you know technical questions, everybody's been you know helping everybody uh, else out, which has been really really rich because I'm about to type something out, and then somebody else types a, a really great answer, maybe from someone who actually owns that piece of equipment. So it's just been really exciting uh, to go through that. Um, some of the things that uh, have come across in the group: Wilbur Mark Mullins. Um, I don't know where you know this, but on the left-hand side of the group, you can search all the discussions, you can search all the comments and things like that. Um, that is, if you just search Wilbur Mark Mullins, look at some of the, um, the pictures that he's posted. Uh, it actually st it started out this morning, I posted a picture of my son, Evan Wells, because I was just proud, as you know, being a proud dad, and um, uh, he was playing a song from an artist that he really, really loves uh, called Henrik Lamar. And he's actually going to see him on Wednesday night. Uh, Mum bought him a uh, VIP ticket. So he's gonna meet the person that he, uh, the artist that he loves so much. Anyway, that's at the top of the Pro Audio EXP group. And um, Wilbur Mark Mullins um, commented on that and said, it's so neat that you, you've you given the gift of music to the people in your family because he was saying he grew up in a musical family. His mum bought him his very first guitar um, and uh, he started posting a bunch of pictures that looked like they came out of Time magazine. They were just so, so cool. Um, 
of him and his brothers performing like they look like they're little kids. Um, but anyway, I just love that Wilbur. Another one was Linton uh, Monas. I hope I'm pronouncing everybody's names right. If if not, please drop them in the in the comments there. But um, he posted some pictures of him um, running sound in the Adelaide Hills. Now I'm from Adelaide, so he told me exactly where it was, uh, which was out the back of. Um, uh, uh, the auto museum up in the Adelaide Hills. And I, so I knew exactly where it was. Um, it was very, very cool to, to see that. Looked very hot too, because it's very cold here in Colorado. And we're looking forward to, you know, when springtime uh, comes around. Um, Roy Bates, boy, Roy Bates, if you're watching, or if you're watching later on in the replay, the post that you put in there he gave us a tour of his live sound setup and he's building this new sound booth and everything with his dad who is i think he said was in his 80s and they're doing all the woodworking together building up this booth to put the, the console in and everything and he uh, kind of gave some tips on how to set up uh, you know a live sound booth and things like that as well as a very tasty guitar that he that he made um it uh, looked like a, a custom guitar that he built it was like a kind of a Fender Jaguar kind of kind of thing. And then Mark Eckhart, if if you're watching your gorgeous studio, I th there were more comments on your studio this week than anybody's, I think, mate. And um, uh, I, I mean, I just looking through, I was like, I think everybody was drooling and going, "Wow, we want a we want a studio like Mark Eckhart's as we are when we grow up." Uh, who else was there? Alton Leonard your hurdy-gurdy that you're either building or restoring you know the the amount that i know about hurdy-gurdies you could put on the back of a postage stamp but anyway it looked really cool and thanks for posting that stuff jim mantiagas b3 with his leslie cabinets i wow i don't know where you've seen those that post i i've met jim personally because i i did some home recording seminars across the country a few years ago um, I did one uh, LA, San Francisco, Dallas, Chicago, New York, and Miami over the course of maybe a month or two. So I met Jim, and he was one of the students there that day. We went out for in and out uh, uh, for lunch, hung out. It was so cool. But he posted some just some great pictures of his B3, and you can't have a B3 without a Leslie cabinet, right? It's kind of like peanut butter without jelly. But man, some of those pictures uh, were great there. Uh, Scott Bevins, man, your studio, holy smoke, that was a beautiful. If I mean, there are some studios that inspire you technically, and you know, you you, you look at them and go, man, that's you know, uh, I'd love to have that gear. But um, Scott Bevins, he you know, he he may have the technical gear there, but in terms of just in, inspiring surroundings. It was absolutely gorgeous um, to have a look at his studio uh, there. Um, who else was there? Oh, there was Ken Marvin. Um, oh, that's right. I remember that. Pete, uh, Pete just said uh, was tracking about minus 18. Um, that's, that's a good question. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, so uh, Ken uh, Marvin also took as for a, a tour of his studio setup, which was great. Uh, so keep those those um, uh, those those tours coming. Try to keep them under under three minutes. Uh, only do that. It's not you know it, it's not a hard and fast rule, but just it tends to be a little bit kind of rambling if people you know go on for 10, 15 minutes. You know if you can keep it short and sweet. But it's just really neat to to see all that stuff. So we are at about uh, eight minutes after the hour. I'll wait just for a couple of couple of more minutes before uh, people get on before we get into this topic. So the topic that we chose this week was uh, gain stages and what's the big deal about them and, and why sh you should care. So gain stages really, um, they go hand in hand with uh, signal levels. And so here's the way that I always uh, teach this. Stacey Morrison from Las Vegas. How are you, mate? Good to see you, man. And Jacob is joining. Good deal, guys. So now we're getting the party started. So uh, just to, to reiterate, um, my name is David Wells with Pro Audio EXP. I've been Pro Audio DVDs forever, uh, for the last 20 odd years, 24 years. And we've just uh, changed it. Um, retiring that website and that brand 
but I am certainly not retiring. We're amping it up. Uh, Don Short, how are you, mate? All right. Um, if, if people don't know Don, Don is the hardest working man in, uh, in comments and, uh, and posting things. Good to have you here, Don. Um, so uh, let's go back to gain stages and uh, signal levels. So they really go hand in hand. Here's the way that I always describe it. Um, right at the beginning, we've all learned this ever since we had cassette tapes and, and you know, we were setting levels with the V view meters and all that kind of stuff. You have two enemies when you are setting levels. If um, instead of doing this VU, I'll, I'll do this from you know, bottom to top. You have your noise floor down here and you have your distortion up here and you want to set your levels away from those two extremes. And so um, in terms of, of hitting distortion, everybody knows what, what happens when you hit distortion. Distortion is nasty. You don't want to hear it. You want to have a clean, clean um, uh, recording or a clean signal that's going through your PA system. You, but you don't want to be so afraid of distortion that you live down here in the noise floor. And in the analog world, there was a lot of noise. Digital stuff tends to have less noise and it also has um, much more uh, resolution, especially when you go to high bit rates like you know, 24 bit and things like that. But it, let, let me get back on topic. Noise floor bad, distortion bad. Now, the only place distortion is, is good is in something like this. This is a, a tube amp that I made uh, off of a, um, a design from my brother down in, uh, in the Barossa Valley in South Australia. He has amp schools where he teaches people how to build this amp and they call them lamingtons. Um, <laughs> because this is a lamington tray. If, if this is in America, we call it a, uh, maybe a brownie, the brownie amp or something like that. But basically, I built this. I can't believe I built this, but the schematics were so good. And apart from just, you know, this being a guitar amp, I just want to talk about amplification and um, attenuation. And so in this first knob here, this bumps up the amplification on this first preamp tube. And the more you bump it up, you start to get in the clipping. But the great thing about uh, uh, tubes in particular is that when you clip a tube, it, it doesn't distort in a horrible way, especially with guitar tone, it distorts in a beautiful way. And we've all heard that in a million different amps, right? The reason that it does this is that uh, with, with tube technology, what it tends to do is uh, throw off a lot of extra harmonics and the harmonics that come off of a, a overdriven tube uh, tend to be um, uh, even order harmonics so you have your fundamental here and then you have your first harmonic second harmonic third fourth you know if the most um, famous and most relatable thing about a harmonic is if you think of the the song yeah uh, uh, roundabout by yes that goes boom ding you know that that song right so the they are harmonics and they are higher order um uh, overtones and so in in the old analog gear put a little bit of of overdrive on there a little bit of distortion a little bit of tape saturation it was all good but in the digital world, when you run out of uh, a way to describe a waveform, um, then you get into all sorts of, of trouble. If you guys are computer geeks, you'll, you'll probably understand this. Everything in your computer is broken down into ones and zeros, into bits and bytes, right? So in a 16-bit, in a um, uh, uh, two eight-bit, eight-byte words, you have uh, all the ones and zeros. If you crank up your levels in a, in a digital unit, like a, a lot of people here are using some of the Tascam uh, DP series, or if you're using a DAW, if you clip that and whatever analog to digital, A to D converter, whatever you have, if that runs out of a way to describe that waveform, in other words, they're all ones, one, 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 ones all the way across, then it doesn't distort gracefully like a, a tube amp or a tape. It sounds absolutely horrible. So here's the job of, that's a long preamble to 
tell you what all the gain stages are. Think of a signal that first comes to you and you're cradling it in your hands, right? You want to send that along to the next part of the signal chain fairly unchanged first you want to boost it up to a nice level and then kind of send it along unchanged the very first part of a signal level um, the signal normally needs to get bumped up a lot it, microphones do not put out much uh, uh, level um, uh, guitar pickups don't put out much level so the very first part where that signal chain goes along you want to bump that up and then kind of ride it along the way uh, from there. So I'm going to see if I can do something here where I can share my screen. Now, I feel like I've lost something. Oh, my gosh. Um, it, I thought that I'd be able to, to talk and then share my screen and go back and forth, but it doesn't look like I can do that looks like an, I can either do one or the other so all that work I did with, with doing animations and slides this afternoon will not work I'll research that better so I can do it uh, next week so let me do this in hand signals <laughs> rather than the fancy slides that, uh, that uh, I'd already set up imagine you had four copy machines you had a copy machine here copy machine here here and here and you had uh, a little little picture that you wanted to put through the first copy machine and blow that up and then take a copy of that and reduce it a whole lot and then on, on the fourth one then blow it all the way up then here's the problem if you blow it up past the restraints of what a, a sheet will hold then you'll clip the image right if a piece of paper is only this big and you blow the image up to larger that sheet you will clip off that image then if you decide okay let me shrink that down then it'll it, it'll still be uh, clipped so the the whole idea is at the very beginning of your signal chain get it up to a good level and then the various other gain stages after that you really want to send it send it through at what they call unity gain or zero db so this was all really pretty in some slides i'm going to have to have you use your, your imagination imagine i have a wireless microphone right here then i have a receiver so the wireless microphone transmits to the receiver then the receiver goes into the mixer and then uh, the mixer has a, a trim knob and a, and a, a fader and then a, um, a left and right, and then the amps have levels. That's six levels of gain stage. The little, uh, on, normally on wireless microphones or wireless belt packs for your, uh, for your guitars and whatever, there's normally a little mini screwdriver adjustment there to adjust the gain from there. And so you could adjust it there. You could adjust it at the receiver of that transmitter. You could then adjust it on the trim of the input channel of your mixer then you could adjust it at your fader and then you could adjust it at your left and right fader and then you could adjust it at your um, at your amps that is six levels of gain stages and you could mix them all up and still get the same level at the end but if you do them in the wrong order then you get a either a very distorted uh, signal or you get a very noisy signal. So if we start right at the beginning um, Depending on what actually let's make this very very simple because um, a lot of you will be using DAWs and uh, and uh, Standalone units like this set of task cam units. So What's what happens when you first plug a microphone or a guitar into one of those units? It first hits the trim or the gain knob now imprint this into your brain forever the trim or the gain knob is where the best part of your signal level levels happen or the worst part of your signal levels happen because anything downstream of that will be affected by how you set it right there and so here's how we would normally set it um, some people call that a pre-level uh, a pre-fader level so that means that uh, the signal goes in 
And the first thing we don't want to do is bump this up because you think about a, a, a string moving up and down on a, a, across a magnet on a guitar, that's making an alternating current coming out of the jack of the guitar, but it's a tiny, tiny signal. You need to bump that up. And so what you need to do is bring that up as hot as you can without distortion. So what is as hot as you can? Is it minor? And what kind of metering do you have? Do you have like a really nice um, uh, peak, um, uh, peak and RMS uh, meter with, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 different ladders, you know, steps on the ladder? Or do you have a little three or $400 uh, hardware recorder that has three <laughs> things on there, which is, you know, um, you know, yellow, 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 green, red. And then, you know, the resolution the viewing resolution of that is very difficult to know where where you are. You might be, if you're scared of hitting the red, you might be actually setting it down uh, low, you know, too low uh, before you go um, uh, forward from that. But basically, everything happens at the trim knob. Set that up, you know, so that you can get as, as hot as possible without distortion. And then everything else uh, after that, you can set up to be whatever levels uh, you like. Um, there's a school of thought that I've seen in live people that they say, put all the faders up at zero dB. And you know what zero dB is? About 80% up uh, the level. There's normally a little shaded mark that says something like unity or zero dB. Some people put all their faders up at the zero dB and then adjust their trims. And that's not the way to do it. You can bring all the faders down if you like, because normally you can see the metering without the faders being up. And then you'd go through and adjust every trim knob until everything is, um, uh, is hitting the levels that you, you wanna see. So uh, if it's a live performance, you wanna tell the, the people on stage, say, hey, give me a level, play as loud as you would um, uh, when, you know, when we're gonna be playing for real. Because some people, you know, I find there are some vocalists who are kind of a little timid and they say, Check, 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 check. And then so you bring it up so that you're just below clipping and you think you're good. And then when they actually sing and they've got some courage and they've got the band behind them, they're singing this loud and then all of a sudden all of your levels are bad. So that's just a little coaching tip if you're, if you're uh, coaching you know, people to uh, at a sound check or something like that. Anyway, so everything comes up to that level. Um, I think I might split this into another uh, a subject next week because what we're going to do, I think you really need to understand the difference between analog metering and uh, and digital metering. In di in digital metering, uh, it's called DBFS uh, for full scale. That means that, like I said before, um, you hit that, it just sounds horrible. So you never want to hit that. Um, I think, yeah, Pete's uh, question was, should he set that at like, like minus, minus 18 or something like that? Um, that, uh, I think on a 24-bit system, I would definitely do that. On a 16-bit system, I'd maybe have it up a little bit higher. And we'll talk about that in terms of resolutions and, and bit depths uh, next week. But here's the takeaway from today. Gain stages are complicated. There are so many, I mean, in a, in, a, in a live situation, including subgroups and things like that, uh, you could have eight different places to set your levels, but imprint this into your brain. The place that you really need to concentrate on is the trim. Now, I might back that up if you're using wireless systems, uh, there's something that happens before the trim knob that you need to make sure on your belt packs and things like that. Uh, they're set up. They're set up right. Uh, in fact, um, my carbon uh, base, the one right. Uh, this is hard to do backwards too. The one next to my Aussie base. This is my main base. Whenever I play with that, it runs off two nine volt batteries. It's got a hot preamp, and so every time I plug that into, you know, if I'm guesting someplace and I just I pick up whatever belt pack is there for the bass guitar. If I plug it into my base and they've set their levels on that little pack to like a precision base or something like that, you know, something, a passive base, then I put mine on there and they're getting distortion out there. The guy at the front desk 
is pulling down his trim and he's like, it's still distorting. He said, yeah, it's distorting because it's at the belt pack. You had this set up for a passive base. Get out a little micro screwdriver and just bump that down. So just think of everything goes downstream from the signal source. In this case, it was an active base going into a transmitter, into a receiver, into an input channel, and then uh, 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 so on and so forth from there. I'm bummed that I don't have all the slides that I was going to show you because they were so pretty. And they, you know, they, um, in most of my courses that I that I teach, I normally go back and forth between conversations and then you know seeing it live uh, in, in action and then some uh, some slides as well. But anyway, do you get the idea now that uh, the the place you're really going to have to concentrate is the input trim, and um, uh, and also we'll talk about this next week. But the best thing you can do if you're using the same piece of equipment all the time, in other words, the same I/O box that goes in your computer or your same hardware recorder, make some test recordings. And then import them to a computer into something like Audacity and then look at that waveform and see how much headroom you have. Because it might be that on you know, some uh, little recorder like an R16 or, or a, a, you know, a, D, a Tascam DP series, that you hit what you think is kind of like you're being brave and think, oh, this is, this is probably as how hot I, as I need to go. Maybe you record that waveform, pop it into Audacity and realize, you have another, you know, 12 dB to go. Um, uh, so that, that would be something I, I, I talk about. But next week, we're going to talk about the difference between analog metering and digital metering and why that is a big deal. And it really comes down to things like bit depth, not so much sample rate, but really about uh, a bit depth. Could bit depths describe the waveform in terms of their levels? Um, uh, sample rate uh, tends to... Uh, you tend to have concerns about the top end. It's not so much a big deal now because we're all recording at you know, 41 or 48K or 96K or you know, 192 or something like that. But anyway, oh gosh, I'm, 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 uh, I've gone a little bit, I haven't gone long, we're still got a few minutes, but I wanted to um, just give you a quick heads up um, of what's going on this week. We're getting closer to launching ProAudioExp.com. Um, migrating all of your, account, your accounts over. If I never see another database or spreadsheet or lookup table or key field, I'll be a very happy man. There's so much, um, there's so much to all this stuff. But the nice thing is that, I don't know whether you guys know much about web design and things like that, but the ProAudioDVDs.com website was built on WordPress and this plugin and this plugin and this and a bunch of gaff tape. And um, so what I love about the new platform is when we migrate everything over, it's going to be a much better experience for you. And um, it'll just be um, a lot faster and lots of good stuff. Um, I've been trying to re uh, reply to as many comments as I have. I'm just so under the pump right now in terms of um, uh, uh, getting this new website up and running and interfacing with my um, uh, the other people who are working on this. But it's really taking a lot of my time. So I think in about a month, um, I'll just be back to just happy David and <laughs> be able to you know create new courses and be able to help you guys uh, on there. Uh, you, by the way, do you guys have any questions about what I've gone over uh, today in terms of gain stages? If you do, just drop, drop me a, a comment down there. Um, uh, so the actual website will be uh, up and running. I would say, I said it was going to be February. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I chose the shortest month of the, of the year, but I would say it's probably going to be at, at, the, at the end of this month. Um, and um, uh, but by the way, next Monday, it's going to be my birthday. So I hope to see you on, on that one. Uh, maybe I'll have a beer here. I'm not sure. But um, uh, that'll be good to see you uh, next, next week. Um, what else am I going to say? Can you also uh, continue to drop in video tours of you, either your studio or your live sound environment? Because it has been um, so much fun to see that. 
uh, I think, I, like I said that uh, last week, your names used to be just just lines on a spreadsheet. Uh, they're not anymore. You know, I'm seeing uh, the background of your lives and how you guys create music, and that's revving me up. Um, and uh, man, I'm just I'm just loving it. Um, what else? And I was just going to say, just please be uh, patient with me um in terms of getting to your comments i'm really trying to but sometimes when you look at the activity thing on the top of facebook there's like a million things there and you know i'm trying to hit all the comments but it's it's sometimes very difficult to do that so if you've been contributing uh please um and i, I haven't got around to commenting please um uh, know that uh I'm just loving the, the camaraderie of all of this, not just between you and I, but also uh, between all the other people uh, who are in Pro Audio EXP. It's, it's a heck of a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, so I didn't see any questions uh, that came up, so maybe we hit uh, all of the things. But uh, if you go ahead and um, uh, if you're watching this afterwards, please drop your comments in. And uh, I'll go through and uh, answer as many uh, as I can. Um, and what else am I going to say? And then next week we'll, we'll kind of bleed over into uh, analog and digital metering, which is you might not think is an exciting thing, but it's an exciting thing when you get a pristine recording versus a recording that's not so much. Anyway, great to see you guys. And um, please drop in the comments any questions. I'll be looking at them uh, uh, it's a school night, so I've got to get through my daughter's homework, things like that, but I'll certainly get to, around to them tomorrow. Okay, thanks so much, guys. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.